good morning to all of you. I think uh, first up, I would like to thank uh, uh, the IG IGPC for having invited me to this conference. And I think especially Professor Sundaravalli and her team of uh, officials who have been very actively involved, not only with the International Financial Services Center, but also with the Ministry of Finance and Department of Commerce and many other, um, and the stakeholders, the, 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 the industry and so on and so forth. So uh, um, it, it, is a, it is actually a great piece of work, which I think the World, Count, World Count Council and the industry have actually done in setting up such an institution, because it's very important that when gold being a, such a very important commodity for the, uh, as far as India is concerned, gold is almost equivalent to fiat money in, in many ways, I think. So the, it's very important that uh, this is researched, because I mean, on an annual basis, uh, we import uh, a huge uh, um, uh, 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 quantity of gold, I mean, and the India's um, reserves of gold, I, mean, I think, both official as well as unofficial, is really huge, I, mean, I think. People say it's 30,000, I don't know, I mean, we, uh, if you count the 800 tons that comes in every year, I think, net, and maybe net it off against the exports, I think it could be even more, I, mean, I think, we don't know, I think. These are all just estimates. So I only hope that we get to a, a better number <laughs> in some course of time. So with such a very large reserve, I think it's a very important asset for the, for the economy itself. So it's very important on how to use this asset effectively, I think. We were just discussing just before this meeting again, the same questions keep coming again and again. How to financialize gold? I mean, this, this word has stuck around for a lot of time. But as of, I think maybe I think it's time has come for, for us to actually develop an index of financialization of gold. Because gold is a very important commodity like land. I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's a fixed asset in some ways. I mean, I think, though it's mobile, but in a, it's, it's, it's an illiquid asset in many ways. I mean, I think, because it's stuck in the cupboards of, 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 of uh, ordinary citizens. So uh, similarly, if you could take the case of the Reserve Bank of India also, it's, it's 700 or 800 tons is also stuck in the vaults. So it is not really circulating the economy. So therefore, uh, what are the uh, benefits that we uh, that accrues? How could it be used effectively for the for the benefit of the economy? Are there any risks emanating from from such kind of huge reserves accumulating when without being actually financialized? I mean, I think these are all several questions that uh, that uh, that uh, that don't have an easy answer. So I guess uh, I mean, uh, um, this is a very difficult question to address. So, and therefore, I think the IGPC's presence here uh, is, is, is very, very important, I think. So, uh, the greater the, the, the amount of uh, investigation that goes into the various dimensions of gold in this country, I'm sure that we will come to closer to the, wisdom, uh, to the, to, to the truth and reality, which will guide us in policy making. So, uh, in fact, today morning I was just curious, I think. So, my association with IGPC goes back to at least about six, seven years ago, I think, since my days in DEA, when uh, we were kind of uh, looking at the Niti Aayog's uh, Transforming Gold Report and looking at how to actually to push the financialization of gold. So, I remember several meetings that me, Mr. Somasundaram, I think, uh, uh, the uh, Mr. Professor Sahai and many others uh, uh, used to have, I mean, I think, uh, on many of these topics. I think we were also uh, uh, debating the, the need for a bullion exchange and so on and so forth. So, a lot of water has flowed under the bridge since then. And I am very happy that I think uh, the industry and the uh, and general and the government in specific have actually kind of uh, uh, bitten the bullet by, by taking some very important and good decisions. Though it has taken time, I think it has moved further. So, but finally, I think at the end of the day, uh, I mean, if gold is such a very important commodity and if India is such a very important player in gold and silver markets, then I think uh, we must be calling the shots in the international markets. But unfortunately, it is not the case. So that is also a subject matter of research. What would it take to actually to, to ensure that India calls the shots in the international market? If you are, if you are buying one-fourth of the, the world's gold, I mean, I think, and if you are almost buying, say, 80-90% of the world's silver, then I guess, uh, I mean, I think there must be certain levers that we are really not uh, knowing or we are not really pulling, I mean, I think, which need to enable that India calls the shots in the global markets. So we don't have a benchmark price. We are not able to uh, kind of, uh, our uh, demand is so dispersed and unaggregated un un or disaggregated that I think we are not able to uh, have any impact on the global markets. So I think these are all subject matters for research and I'm sure that uh, we will, we will, uh, we should actually get uh, very close to all, all these subjects uh, in some time from now. So as a regulator, obviously, I think we are interested in a, quite a lot of things. I, mean, I think I mean, from, a, from an India perspective, as I already mentioned, financialization of gold is a very, very important agenda. How to ensure that uh, these, this gold comes out of the cupboards and actually gets circulated in the economy, adding value, creating jobs, and so on and so forth is a, is a question which begs uh, a, 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 
a good answer. Similarly, I think uh, uh, how do we actually integrate with global best practices with uh, uh, such as responsible sourcing or good delivery, etc. I think India doesn't have a standard as of now, though we are adopting a lot of these global standards. So should we, I mean, I think get there. I think I remember that uh, in DEA, I think we had several meetings with BIS and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the industry as well. So uh, I think we need to push it forward and see that how we will be able to at least develop an India good delivery standard. It's very, if you're a good large buyer, and we have such re refining capacity, we must have our own good delivery standards. We can't afford to kind of, uh, if a small country like UAE, which really doesn't produce gold, nor does it have a large market, it is just a trading hub. So if it can have a good delivery standard, so can we, I think. So therefore, I guess uh, it's only a question of how we are all able to come together, bring people together and uh, get those standards off the ground. It's something which I think we need to really apply our mind to. Um, Consumer motivation, behavior, etc. All these are also a subject matters of research. In fact, uh, the uh, this uh, I mean, it's a very interesting thing. I was seeing your dashboard, I think, which is a good piece of work, I think. In fact, the dashboard has scope for further improving, you know, because the more the amount of data you put out in the public domain, I think the wiser people will get, I mean, on on on, on using gold as a as a financial tool. So, uh, I mean, I was very uh, surprised to know that uh, the bottom of the pyramid is actually driving gold purchases and so on and so forth, you know, I think because it's, I mean, it's the top of the pyramid actually really doesn't invest so much in gold, I mean, I think as, uh, uh, in, in terms of an asset, uh, uh, as a percentage of the assets. So, uh, that is a, that's a very important area for research, I mean, I think the precious metal uh, stocks as hedges and safe havens, I think these are all uh, another topics of research. Uh, benchmarking of gold prices and how I think India can actually uh, uh, create a benchmark price. I think the exchange now is, I mean, I think if volumes can pick up, uh, I'm sure that will, the, the prices that emerge, I think, could become a benchmark price. So we look forward to the day, I think, when I think the, the, the trading there becomes more uh, uh, intense and, uh, and uh, reliable to the extent that this benchmark can emerge as a, as a regional benchmark. Then uh, the, there are other things like uh, financial products, which I think uh, is also of interest, I think, because, I mean, especially for IFSC, because we have a 18 million strong uh, non-resident Indian community which lives, lives abroad. Can we get them to save in gold in, uh, in, in Gift City? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, is it possible that we, there are digital gold products that can be built out of Gift City that, uh, uh, that can be offered to such uh, players? I mean, I think, can we have an ETF in gold? I mean, I think, uh, taking, taking off very soon. I mean, I think, maybe there are issues on taxation and a few other things which need to be fixed, but we have around the job. But I hope that I think maybe the, the array of products that are offered, uh, for the for the uh, for the NRIs, I mean, I think for the retail investors who are abroad, should ex actually be expanded. Today we have a range of financial products, savings products, insurance products, etc. But I think we need to expand it to include gold also, given that it is a very important from a uh, product from a customer perspective. So we uh, in, in in IFSC have uh, I mean have supported the emergence of this uh, of the of the I, I, IIBX, which is uh, I mean I think Mr. Gautam is here. I think I'm sure that uh, this itself is a the exchange itself is a subject matter of research on how I mean I think maybe an independent evaluation of how it has performed. I mean I think from a third party view from by I, IGPC could well serve a purpose of looking at how it should go further. I mean I think in what manner should it go further? I think maybe that can be maybe one of the areas that probably uh, something which you can take up on. Uh, examining how this uh, institution and the market infrastructure which includes uh, the um, um, the CDSL uh, uh, and, and the the depositories and other uh, the intermediaries and all can be used to effectively to actually to drive the uh, the uh, emergence of a benchmark price and also to ensure that India plays a very significant role in the gold markets. Now the uh, uh, the regulation in this regard has been um, has been put in place quite some time ago and uh, the uh, uh, the supporting, I mean, uh, um, enabling guidelines and circulars from RBI also have been issued in the recent times. I think uh, they've also enabled the participation of banks in the in the uh, in IIBX, which is I think is a big step forward. So we only hope that in the next several months, I think the participation of not only Indian banks but also foreign banks in this uh, would would really take off, enabling greater amount of uh, um, uh, trading in 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 the exchange. The uh, we also believe that there is a scope for. Uh, for moving up the value chain, not just being a trading hub, but also a possibility of setting, uh, being a refining hub also is a possibility. Because today, uh, through the, uh, the auspices of the uh, UAE SIPA, I think a lot of uh, trading and refining has shifted to UAE. UAE. So where we are a, we, being a very large buyer, I think there is a great opportunity for us also to do the refining. I think, I mean, already India imports something like 250 tons of uh, Dore. 
for refining. But I think there is a case for also to look at whether um, uh, refining can be uh, can can be commenced in Gift City as well. I think I mean the uh, the enabling uh, re regulations are in place, and if there are any further improvements to the regulation that is required, I think we are willing to look at that as well. I think so. There may be some small tweaks to tax policies, etc., which might be required. Customs uh, tariff, etc., etc., might be required. But I think obviously, if there is a requirement, I think we shall do. We shall definitely look at it. So there is a case for for actually refining in gift city and i think uh, even land has been made available it, now it's a question of i mean i think the uh, the interest of the uh, of the market and also i mean i think uh, are working together to ensure that we have an enabling ecosystem the uh, i think the uh, ifsc is also working with the rbi on the on the on, on the gold uh, loan um, gold uh, gold metal loans and uh, the leasing ecosystem i think so we only hope that over a period of time these kind of products also would enable would be enabled enabling to actually to offer a, a larger uh, spectrum of products which would uh, bring uh, the market players into uh, into the gift markets significantly the uh, uh, a lot of reforms have gone in in the last uh, several uh, months including say uh, enabling the trq holders i mean i think to participate in the uh, who are uh, who have been enabled under the uae cpa to participate in iibx the igcr rules for trq holders are, are exempted if they ex import uh, gold through the iibx um, uh, similarly i think uh, the uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, support has also been obtained from the customs and the uh, uh, and the uh, department and the department of commerce as well in terms of uh, providing necessary uh, technology support in terms of ice gate and so on and so forth the uh, role of if uh, the gift, gift city in the gold market will further improve if we are able to provide delivery across major cities in the country so therefore i think we are also in the process of uh, of providing delivery centers i think one in chennai is likely to come up shortly i mean i think there are many other centers including seeps and uh, and um, uh, calcutta and many other places which are under the, under planning so we only hope that this would definitely enable the uh, the uh, traders across uh, traders and jewelers across the country to benefit from the from the infrastructure that has been put in place and the and the regulations that obtain in ifsc so um, the um, the, the 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 difficulty i mean obviously obviously faced by the uh, by the exchange and uh, and the uh, and the gold ecosystem there is obviously because of the complex uh, tariff regimes that have obtained over a period of time i think because it is not a, it, the tariff structures have evolved organically in bits and pieces over because of the fts that we have signed because of the various kinds of uh, gold products that are imported into the country and so on and so forth so this disparateness and the and the and the, and the uh, 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 has also created a kind of uh, a problem in enabling gold to come in various forms i mean uh, bypassing the uh, the 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 exchange uh, uh, process so therefore i think these also need to be set right i think uh, i mean we only hope that in the next uh, year or so we will work on some of them to enable uh, a more systematic way in which i think gold comes into the country enabling greater uh, um, uh, organization of the trade because the idea of that idea of that if gold is such a very important strategically important commodity organizing the trade and making it more formal i think is the is, is the one which will actually bring the best uh, the, the best benefits to the economy it will i mean i think uh, uh, formalizing the formalizing the trade would would have would have multiplier effect I, mean, I think in in, the, in terms of ensuring that uh, the there is uh, um, respect for the rule of law and that it also would also have a strategic importance because go, india is a vulnerable country in many ways so i mean with money laundering and uh, i mean uh, financing of terrorism and so on and so forth so it is very important from a national strategic perspective also to ensure that this trade is more and more formalized i think if you achieve, achieve 100% formalization would be a very tall order but then at, to achieve a large degree of formalization i think should be on top of our agenda to ensure that i think uh, india uh, keeps the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the legal uh, part of the trade under check i think and obviously tariff uh, will play a very important role and other uh, policies also around that also will play a very important role in this uh, let me also say that um, uh, we uh, in ifsc uh, are very keen to ensure that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, rule of law is respected and especially i think um, uh, we uh, are keen that uh, the fatf uh, uh, stipulations and and the principles are all up upheld uh, properly because unless uh, uh, we have a, a market which is uh, which abides by the by the rule of law i think things can uh, i mean really the reputation can go for a sixer and we wouldn't want that so therefore uh, as a supervisor let me say that uh, we are very keen to ensure that, uh, that we have already uh, very strong aml and cft reg uh, uh, regulation already in place 
and uh, the, the the exchange and the market infrastructure have been taking a lot of pains to ensure that uh, i mean i think uh, this uh, is respected and uh, we believe that the ongoing uh, process of improvement to regulations as well as the policies of the of the various ministries also will 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 uh, we will, uh, will 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 play a very important role in ensuring this uh, this pressure towards uh, uh, organized and uh, uh, gold uh, business which which is uh, which which is as per is within the uh, the rule of law so uh, we uh, therefore would uh, would be very happy to work towards uh, greater adoption of the of res uh, responsible sourcing um, norms the uh, establishment of good delivery standards and uh, and also to ensure that uh, the the market participants all respect the international norms relating to aml cft and etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, we have been working uh, with the market and we believe that uh, there is this is a very important area for uh, tightening uh, in fact the fatf uh, supervisory uh, team review team which had come a few months back had uh, done a very detailed uh, exercise of uh, completely reviewing include uh, the the various elements of uh, ifsc as well uh, including the, the the gold ecosystem i think uh, they have uh, uh, gone back with a with a very positive uh, feedback on what has been done so far and what has been put in place so far but uh, there is no room for any complacency and therefore i think we all need to be ensure that that uh, the regulations are are are, are up, uh, constantly updated and it is uh, enforced i uh, would also like to say that uh, the um, the uh, the way forward i mean if you look at it is is to ensure that uh, uh, we have uh, retail products in ifsc as i already mentioned the i mean rolling out of digital products is is probably one of the tasks between the banks and the capital market uh, players so both i think have to work together to ensure that uh, the, uh, the 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 gold related products are available in different scales i think because there are various kinds of uh, of nris i think the people who are ordinary workers who work in other jurisdictions may also want to save so i think uh, having products which are affordable to many of them i think is also very important so uh, ensuring that uh, that the uh, products are financially inclusive is also very very important i think this is an area of uh, of great um, uh, importance for us so we also believe that uh, the launch of etfs and many other uh, kind of gold products in in gift city will will be uh, will play a very important role in uh, in expanding the gift markets finally uh, i i will end by saying that uh, our association with igpc is uh, has been very productive we only hope that uh, over a period of time i think uh, we should also expand uh, the the offerings which igpc gives in terms of including training programs for market participants you know i think uh, in fact uh, 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 exchange traded derivatives are today available i mean in the uh, uh, today i think rbi is now enabled otc derivatives as well so hedging now will become a very important part of the activities so maybe for training for traders uh, i mean or for um, other market participants on how uh, i mean i think these kind of product can be used i think between the exchange and ima and igpc i think you should we should actually roll out a few training programs to enable more of the market participants to and and uh, even industry players to understand uh, what we have and to also to get a feedback on what uh, we may further do to to expand the markets is something that uh, we should undertake so with these few words i'll stop here and i wish uh, the conference all success look forward to receiving the proceedings of the conference and uh, um, and i we i strongly believe that uh, this con kind of conferences actually bring up a lot of policy uh, imperatives which are required both from a, i mean uh, from a, a government perspective as well as from a regulatory perspective so i look forward to all of that and uh, thank you uh, for inviting me once again Thank you.